All right. Well, it only took 15 rounds of voting to get Kevin McCarthy elected as Speaker of the House of Re- Representatives. So, you know, I think I can. I think I can. About you know. time. Yeah, it happened. Uh, so now there are at least rules and hierarchy in the U.S. Congress. And what will McCarthy set to doing now that he has that gavel? Well, he told us as much. Listen. I know the night is late, but when we come back, our very first bill will repeal the funding for 87,000 new items. Democrats aren't clapping. No. <laughs> They're asleep. 87,000 IRS agents. You see, we believe government should be to help you, not go after you. All right. But Ukraine needs that money. Right. Well, That's this what the Democrats is, are thinking. Yeah. This is part of the Inflation Reduction Act, which was passed last August, and it was included in the $1.7 trillion for expansion of the IRS. Now, it's funny you see Republicans sort of jumping to their feet in applause because 27 of them actually voted for the omnibus spending package in late December, where much of this money was approved. Still, this is the party line. Right, that this is unnecessary. The IRS should not be beefed up. We don't need this to go after regular people. So what will happen to the IRS now? Well, it's interesting to look at what they've been up to in the last few years to see if they will do more of the same. Now, last year, then Commissioner IRS, IRS Commissioner Charles Reddick told Congress that they were so behind they couldn't even get to their audits. Um, they cashed your checks, though. If you made payments to them, they were on that one. If they owed you something, no, they were super behind. Uh, They said they were not collecting revenue. It was a big old mess. Although the data doesn't support that there is a collection problem. Here's from economist Carol Roth. Um, She showed us just the receipts versus the outlays for the last four years, five years here. Um, The IRS clearly does not have a receipts problem. They have an outlay problem. Um, And in fact, when they talk about the percentages of collection, um, it's usually a very low percentage of non-compliant or non-collected payments. Uh, So maybe, I don't know, maybe this means they'll have less to spend on guns. We showed you this calculation back in August from Zero Hedge uh, that told us that the IRS has stockpiled 4,500 guns and 5 million rounds of ammunition in recent years, including 621 shotguns. 539 long barrel rifles and 15 submachine guns. Uh, why do, you know, people who work with calculators and spreadsheets need that? I leave that to you. Yeah, they don't. Uh, but also this means that the IRS will, if this passes, which is a big if, right? So we're not gonna, we're not standing up and ch- cheering that this is happening. We It has to get through Congress, who knows? Um, but this means the IRS will have fewer resources to go after you, the little guy, I'm not calling you little, but most people statistically have a much higher uh, risk of audit than do millionaires. So the University of Syracuse filed a freedom of information request to go over the audit data from the IRS. The IRS did not want to do this. They had been asking for it. They asked Commissioner Reddig. They got no response. So they just filed a freedom of information request. Here's what they uh, they showed. The taxpayer class with unbelievably high audit rates, five and a half times virtually everyone else were low income wage earners taking the earned income tax credit. The credit is provided to offset the taxes for the lowest wage earners in the country. As previously reported, this group of taxpayers have historically been targeted not because they account for the most tax under reporting, but because they are the easiest marks in an era when the IRS increasingly relies upon correspondent audits, but doesn't have the resources to assist taxpayers or answer their questions. Now, you may recall that last year, President Joe Biden said, we're really going to up our customer service. We're going to make sure that the IRS can, like, take your phone calls or answer questions. Uh, That hasn't happened at all. What they mean here by correspondent audits is that the IRS just sends a letter. Um, They kind of spam you for lack of a better word, they send you a letter saying, what about this stuff? Or we want more information about this. Wealthy people 
by and large, uh, one of my favorite podcasts is the Wealth Ability Podcast with Tom Wheelwright. And he talks about how wealthy people are not afraid of audits. They are out in front of their tax strategy. They study tax avoidance, not tax evasion. Um, and they're sort of ready. They operate as if they will be audited. So they're ready for any shot across well, the bow. Uh, to be fair, that's because they can afford that they can afford to hire people to do all that for them. It's like the poor people can't afford to hire accountants and all this other stuff to take care of that. So they're taking it to H and R block and, and things like that. And they're not going to be focused on tax avoidance where these rich people can pay people a lot of money, attorneys and all this yeah. other stuff to make sure they can avoid every single dollar that they'd have to. Spend. Yes. Well, I don't like the, the, the phrasing that they can, but I, I don't dispute that they do because, um, you know, we were paying high taxes, but we didn't have a lot of exposed dis, um, dispensable income. What's the word I'm looking for? Expendable, in, yeah. expendable Ex income. Um, and so I went to the library and read these books, these like tax strategy books. So anybody can do it, but you have to sort of take the time to figure it out figure out what is the best tax strategy. It took us years to hire Tom Wheel, right? Before I, you know, because I was studying this. So it's accessible to most people, but like in this economy, who wants to study these kind of things? It's, it tends to be wealthy people who are putting a lot more, who are hiring others to do it. Yes, we all could do it if we wanted to study I don't it. Think, well, right? I guess, yeah, if you could, it's incredibly difficult. Like, you know, that's why people go to school for this and then you hire. But this is why people well, like Tom say... Wheelwright write these books for us be so that because if we don't have, let's say, Deloitte, you know, forecasting our taxes for the next five years and helping us to avoid taxes, then we can do it ourselves. It's just it's a big I just study. Feel like so you... I'm going on a tangent. Yeah. You have to have a base level analytic mind, though, I think, to do that. Like, I, doing that research on numbers and all this other stuff, I, I mean, I know I could. At the end of the day, I know I could, but I think that that's the thing. It's like, where do you even start? The, the IRS doesn't give you any kind of guideline on, okay, start here. Like, let us help you try to avoid paying us more. Like, well, you start no, with the Wealthability to... podcast. So these things are available yeah. to everybody. That's why, like, I, I believe in Tom's mission to bring these to people who don't have expensive tax planning. But nevertheless, this is what happens, is that wealthy people have, uh, you know, ironclad tax strategies, and the IRS doesn't want to go up against them. They want to go up against the least prepared. And so they will do these correspondent audits by just sending out mailers and the poorest among us will get scared and just either try and come up with the money or, you know, they, they can bully them into getting more out of them. Um, and so here is a chart that shows us uh, the lowest income wage earners is the dark orange here versus everybody else. Now, this includes middle class and millionaires and above. Right. So the lowest income wage earners with anti-poverty earned income credit, meaning they're that low. Look at their risk of audit comparatively. Um, like they said in this, it, it's over five times as high. So you're way more likely to get audited if you're low income than any other group. Uh, so this line we get from politicians that we want more mil millionaires to pay up their fair share. That's total BS. Um, although this study did show that millionaires were slightly more likely to get correspondent audits, um, up 2.8% from the previous year. And what's so frustrating about it is when you have these audits, again, to David's point, you're not going to fight, you know, you're going to say pay this penalty because they're not going to go and hire a lawyer to try to fight a $1,500 penalty or some $1,700 penalty. They're just yeah. going to, they're going to suck it up and they're going to have to pay for it. And I think that's largely why they go after these people. They go after them because they, they know there's not going to be a fight. I mean, I think that $1,500 would probably be the non-payable. Like if you're that low income, you can't just soak it up, but they'll, there's a threshold that they'll ask you for maybe a couple hundred here or there. So they literally can milk the poorest among us. Now, even when millionaires get correspondent audits, that does not mean they pay up. It just means they start to dance. Like, oh, you want some information? I'm ready for this. Here's this, here's that. Although in recent times, and we do have um, high quality tax strategy and people working for us who do our taxes. And even they say there, there was something, um, our, our most recent 
tax payment was misapplied and then we had to correspond with the IRS and they're like, I won't get them on the phone. Like we can send letters and they will respond to letters, but even the best of us, they just said, it's not gonna happen. No, because we, we've waited hours on the phone trying to get them on the phone. And, and you just can't. What they do now and is they, they hired, hang up on you. And they hired thousands upon, so they hire 87,000 IRS agents to come after you, but they don't hire phone staff or support to help you. Right. Like they'll well, go after they, you, they but they like, won't help you. It was like 8% or something like that of the money went to that, I think, the, to the customer experience. Good memory. I can't remember the I percentage, right. but it was like it a was really low like percentage. That. Yeah. Yeah. See, you say you couldn't do your own taxes because you're not good with numbers, but see, you remembered. Yes. Well, I mean, you could. memory is different. <laughs> now, here's the rate of audits for millionaires over the last 10 years, because this is clearly what Elizabeth Warren wants. Um, going up slightly, what's interesting is look at the rate of audits in the 2012, 2013, like during the Obama years, they were high. Uh, millionaires were getting audited. Um, and then look at how it just sort of plummeted. Um, you know, in during the Trump since, years, uh, I wouldn't even call that during the Trump year. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I guess it, star it starts to precipitously fall during the Trump years, um, and then slowly make its way back up. So, I mean, this, this the chart trend line clearly shows you that it's a, it's a partisan issue. Yeah. I mean, the trend line was already going down even under Obama. That 2015 was a blip on that radar, but you could seriously, you could definitely see the trend line going down under Obama already yeah. from 2012 down, down, down. And the 2015 was a blip year for whatever reason, but it was the trend line was already going down right. regardless of who was president. Yeah. So uh, this is an interesting Syracuse program called TRAC, T-R-A-C. And it's interesting to just kind of poke around because they uh, their big thing is they want transparency out of the IRS, transparency that the IRS does not want to give them. And so they are calling for more published data. And um, we'll see if we get that now that we might get a budget haircut from this new Congress. Uh, maybe we'll get even less data but, um, you know, this does not prove the point that they're going after the wealthy 1%. They're not. Hmm. I mean, it's so sad because, again, these are the people that can't afford to fight it. And they will just have to take it, bend over and take it. Yeah. Um, and we, this was the threat. We knew, and this was the warning, when they were going to hire these 87,000 new agents, we knew, based on the data, that they were not going to be used to go collect from scoff laws, tax scoff laws, who are like hiding money in offshore accounts, like the Sam Bankman Freeds of the world, right? right? No, no, well, no, and no, also no, when no, they no. say that they're going to start tracking microtransactions, that was even a bigger tell because right. th these billionaires aren't making microtransactions on Venmo and stuff like that. That's us. Right. Yeah. yeah you're going to pay your babysitter with a, like a, you know, 500, whatever it is going to be like, that's who they're going after on this stuff. And remember that the data we just showed you was for correspondent audits. That's not even actual audits where they're really, you know, doing a proper audit and you get a, uh, an IRS agent assigned, um, though, but those numbers sort of track the correspondence audits though, seem to have a pretty good, like click through rate, you know, like send out some stuff, get some good stuff back. If you ignore that, uh, that might be a red flag. And then they start coming after you a little bit more aggressively. Um, but they're sort of starting with this flyer campaign, just like let's scare some people into sending us some extra tax. That's a Gestapo move. Yeah. So we're sitting here waiting on, uh, go ahead, Phil. Oh, I was going to say, it's, it's just a, it's a, it's a good example of how like unbelievably expensive it is to be poor. And yeah. I mean, it's not just in like that, that you don't have money, but like everything about being impoverished is more expensive because of that. And so yes. now it's like right. so well, that, I, those yeah. are the people they want to go after. Yeah. Like look at interest rates for poor people. Like it, the worse your credit, the higher your interest rate on anything you buy. So it's like, how can we make it even worse for you? It's like, yeah. So like maybe they could pay their loans if they got the same, like interest rate should be the same across the board, two, three to percent or whatever like that. But those people are sometimes paying 30, 40% on things. Yeah. yeah. And when you understand that it's about control, right? When you understand that, that when the government can have you um, under their boot and controlling you, then you're compliant, right? They can give you a bank account. They can roll out like a blockchain. They can roll out their own digital currency. They can dole out money to you on your credit card. Yeah. That you have your social credit score. So they know how much you're traveling. All of this is, is related to that. Um, and so they can control you. They keep the masses controlled and compliant and giving you money. Yeah. If you like thinking about tax planning like I do, listen to the Wealth Ability podcast. Uh, Tom Wilbright is a friend of ours. 
He does say that you should not be auto enrolling in um, direct deposit for either paying your taxes or getting refunds, even though that makes it a lot more tedious because then you have to wait for a check in the mail. But do you want the government to know your banking information where they can just sort of reach in? Uh, I don't do that. No way. And yeah, I'm a, I'm a hard no on this. Um, I understand that some people want their refunds a little bit faster, uh, but that's the risk you take. And if Tom says not to do it, I'm not about to do that. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at Redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to Redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.